Hi, I'm Kirsten Kelly. If you're enjoying these videos, please check out becoming a patron of mine. There's more information in the description of this video. I'm also working behind the scenes to bring you some great deals on some fabulous products. So if you see a card pop up during this video, click on it to check out these great deals. Today's video is on how to ride a spooky jump. So the first thing I want you to think about is that if you know your horse is a spooky kind of horse, then you need to think as you canter around to the fence, press your weight down into your lower leg so you become really nice and secure in your position and keep your chin up. Because the first thing a horse, well, there's a couple of things horses do when they spook. Some of them slow down and slow down and lower their neck because they're looking at it. And those ones tip the rider forward. So if you lift your chin, it'll help you stay really strong through your core and be able to be in a position to just ride her forward when she starts to spook. The other type of spooky one is one who goes exit stage right or stage left quick. So they come and go, oh, I've spotted it, yuck, don't like it, and off they go. So those horses, again, as they swerve, they will drop the rider's weight forward. So again, lift your shoulders, keep your upper body. So whatever, whatever your horse does, the answer is strengthen your upper body and keeping the weight down into the heel. The speed you ride a spooky horse is different though, to, depending on what their reaction is. So a horse that comes, that tries to go wiggly and run off, if you accelerate out of the turn towards the spooky thing, you'll encourage them to panic and swerve off faster. So you need to think about keeping a good energized canter around the turn, so that when you ride out of the turn, you maintain the same canter, you don't increase the speed. And you think about, keeping the leg there and on, but not chasing it any faster. And you may just cluck to say, come on, let's go. Then you've got the other one which backs right off from the corner. You think, same thing, come around the corner with a good quality canter and keep this leg on. Maybe you need to even put a little spur on if he's really spooky so that you keep him going forward. And you may need to get to this point here when he's close, where he's not able to run off and then put the reins in one hand and give him a crack behind your leg to say, go. A big thing is you always need to weigh up. Why is the horse spooky? Is he spooky because he's naturally scared? Then you need to do more work to, be, to make him confident. If it's just his nature, which is great because it makes them really clean jumpers, it's just about being assertive and being you know, strong in your position. Because if you land like a sack of potatoes every time he jumps a bit awkward, he's going to start thinking, I don't like those sorts of jumps because they're uncomfortable for me. So let's come round, good quality canter in the turn, round the corner, count, really stay tall and deep down into your heel, close that leg and just cluck if she starts to back off in those last few strides. Keep the canter round the turn, now count, hug her with your leg, hug her with your leg, good girl. So she's not going to be a good guinea pig today and she's not going to spook at it. But that's good. Okay, I'm going to make it a bit bigger. So keeping that leg on, heels, 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 chin up. Good girl. So unfortunately our guinea pig's not going to be spooky today. She's just cantering it over easily. So it doesn't give you an idea, but I'm sure you've all sat on a spooky horse, you know, once or twice. So just remember, the strength in your position is everything and being able to just close your leg and press them but not feel like you chase them and being assertive, being able to maybe tap them behind your leg, you know, just to say, yes, you are going and always drag lots of variety out so that they get used to jumping lots of different things. Now you can actually introduce them when they're younger by trotting and that way there they've got more time to assess what's going on and so then they don't feel like you've just cantered in and they've got to think really fast. So start with your young horses trotting and popping, always having them small enough so that you will make them jump it. If, even if they come in wiggly, you can still trot over it because they need to learn right from the word go that they need to jump things, that they're not allowed to stop. 
for you, even if it's ugly, still try to make them do it from the trot.